Um, uh, beloved, there are certain times we ought to really be a little bit sensitive to what God is doing. And I believe one of those times is tonight. We need to be, um, even the song that we're singing, I mean, as I, I mean, the verse one and verse two are nice, but I have always loved <laughs> the verse three. And I always, uh, because you see, <laughs> it's even difficult for us to submit. Normal submission is not easy. But now he's talking about, the songwriter is talking about perfect submission. And he's saying, all is at rest. I, in my Savior, am happy and blessed. You see, I don't know why people think that in Christ we are miserable. I, I don't know why. And I don't know why people are chasing after things that will make them happy and they are never happy. Whilst in Christ, if you really find your place in Christ, you are really blessed. He says, I'm watching and waiting, looking about, filled with his goodness, and I'm lost in his love. You see, if you will get lost anywhere, just be lost in the love of God. Because the love of God is so good that if you are lost in his, uh, I mean, there's this song that calls uh, the reckless love. You know, he loves us to the extent of not even caring for his own life. I mean, just giving it up for you and for me. That's the kind of love you want to be lost in. Not the love that somebody will say, I love you, and the next day he sees another person alive. I mean, like, no, not that kind of love. That love where you can really count on, that you can really just say that I give my all to you and I'm just resting in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, I know submitting to Christ is not easy. It's tough. It's difficult. It's challenging. Bible says in um, James chapter 4 verse 7, quickly, can you just... Uh, So submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit it. He didn't say perfectly submit yourself to God. He said submit yourself to God. So if submitting yourself to God uh, uh, will bring resistance to the enemy, how about perfect submission? How about that? I mean, that's why the songwriter, now you can go back to uh, verse 3 for me. That's why the songwriter now says that all is hallelujah um please you are not too fast for me tonight i don't know what is up there with your computer or whatever but you are too slow for my liking yeah all is at rest amen perfect submission all is at rest beloved i don't i don't i, I still can't understand why we cannot trust the word of god i still can't understand why we cannot trust the word of God. I'm going to say something to you tonight. And I, I, I mean, don't, I am not somebody who goes out. I'm just almost always at home. Either I am working in my home office or reading or coming to church and then going back home and all probably going to the bank on the sprinters or at most airport area so i don't go anywhere i mean i'm not somebody who goes around a lot in the last couple of days yesterday and today because of something i've had to go out and i've had uh, uh i had to hear a lot of conversations um interestingly today i met somebody that i knew from my primary school days I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't recognize him. He, he recognized me. I've not changed. Amen. <laughs> but he, he was very slim and now he's a little bit bigger. So I couldn't make him out. He couldn't, but he said he saw the body and he knew that he knew me. <laughs> Interesting. And um, at a point I had to drop down my mask and then he called my name. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, but what I have 
what I'm going to say to you is that you go out a lot. You go out a lot. I'm pleading with you, be careful with what you see, with what you hear. And it's quite interesting that's what I'm talking about tonight. If we are going to renew our minds and be transformed, then we need to know how we have to renew our mind. And I'm going to just talk on about four points. Uh, what we listen to, what we hear, I mean, what we watch, what we, um, conversations we get ourselves involved and all that. That's what I'm going to do tonight. And I believe that because uh, I was supposed to do that last week, we couldn't, we, could, we couldn't get there. We started, but we couldn't get to uh, that place. So uh, my plan was if I'm here tonight, I'm going to do, continue with that. And interestingly, um, I had to go out yesterday and today. And that was, for me, it's a blessing because it's helped me to really understand what I'm going to even talk about even more. Because I've been probably uh, just separated a little bit from the things you guys see in town and all that. Because I don't really spend much time wasting my time. You have to go to work in town and all that. So you will encounter things I would not because that's I also work but I work from I don't work going to town so I don't see what you see and I don't hear what you hear. But I have now come in the yesterday and today I have now really interestingly understood the greed in people in this nation. Uh, yesterday, because what yesterday I was, I went to the rounds with somebody who really goes round as well. So he sees a lot, he knows a lot, and he's, I mean, he was like giving me commentary on <laughs> town and what we were seeing and what we were hearing and all that. And he was giving me commentary. And I have, in fact, I, I just said to myself that. I now I understand why there's so much greed in the lives of many Christians and many people of this country and that has really affected Christians because I'm seeing stuff and he's telling me this is this belongs to those that belongs to that this belongs to that this is that this is that and young boys young people and I mean, you've seen the cars that are being driven around and all that. And now, I just was telling myself that that's why people are so greedy today. Because of what they see, they want as well. Because of what they see, they want. And therefore, I was telling mommy this afternoon when we are coming. Today I went with mommy. So when we are coming, I was telling mommy, I said, and this is why people are really saying that or telling us that we're wasting our time in church. Go out there, go work hard, go do this or that and make the money. I mean, because of what they're hearing, what they're seeing, and what they're getting themselves involved with. And it is, it is dangerous it is dangerous and I, I just want you to understand that please be careful be careful because yet last week we looked at a scripture which I believe um, you all now I believe is sitting in your spirit about Moses you remember that Hebrews 11 okay I, I believe that what I saw and what I was hearing was definitely about the fleeting pleasures of Egypt that um, Bible was talking about that although, um, how do you call him, Moses saw that he could just give it up. Can you put out uh, uh, Hebrews eleven twenty four? By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. The fleeting 
pleasures of sin. Hallelujah. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Treasures, 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 treasures. Beloved, you guys are young. And I want you to really, from this moment, begin to focus on Christ. I'm telling you. Because if this is not a devil, I don't know what it is. Because the way everything is being turned to really worldly things. Everything, even the church slowly is being turned to really conform with the world because the world is going in a certain direction and unfortunately the church is chasing the world in the direction that is going instead of the church trying to really get the world to turn around and follow the church and the direction that the church is going rather the church is now chasing the world and the direction that the world is going why am I saying that? And some of the things I will say, I, I, they, they are never popular. And I, I just want you to understand that I am not standing here trying to, that's why I've been preaching on, uh, on, on wealth and riches and all that. Because I don't want you to misunderstand what I've been teaching. Because many of us think that when you talk up the way I'm, uh, when you speak the way I'm speaking, it looks like you, 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 I mean, like you hate riches or anything, but then you are a hypocrite because you yourself, you drive in a big car, you drive in a four by four, you do this, you do that. So why are you, I am not condemning anything. What I'm trying to say is that God is able to give that to you, but let us not chase it the way we are chasing it let us serve god what is everything that is needful for us god knows and god will give it to us everything that is needful for us god knows and god if god knows what is needful for you i know that god is going to provide for you let us be as simple as possible because it doesn't take the power of the word from your mouth Amen. If you still didn't understand, I'm saying be as simple as possible because it's not go being simple is not going to take the power of the word from your mouth. It's not going to really take anything from what you are preaching or what you are teaching or what you are, you and me, we're going to really talk about with people because <laughs> God the god that we serve knows who we are he called us if you don't have god knows if you have god knows let's be content with what god has blessed us with let's be happy to be in god and serving god we just need to be lost lost in his love just let his love alone be enough for you and for me beloved I, I i am trying as much as i can to encourage you and i'm praying for you that every word that i i mean we sharing uh in the last probably uh, eight weeks will sit in your spirit look find time go back listen to some of the things we've shared and just listen to them over and over again. I, I, if I have the right, what I'm going to tell you is that I know you listen to many things. And I don't really stop you from listening to anything. If it's junk, don't listen to it. But if it's something that is going to edify you, it's good. If it's a preaching that edifies you, you have the right to listen. But if you will ask me, I would tell you that between now i mean in the next two weeks spend time to listen to what we've taught both thursdays and sundays for the last eight, eight weeks go back and listen just go back and listen just go back and take your time and listen to them unfortunately beloved in the lord 
how many of us can tell me tonight that we have quality time of one hour or two hours just sitting down doing nothing but just reading the bible two hours we will not answer any phone we will not play any music we will not really um watch anything on facebook or youtube or anything but we're going to like every week we set in two days or two two days in the week we set in two hours apart or even one hour just to sit down and study the word and just ask god that talk to me through your word beloved there is so much rush in everything that we're doing all of us sitting here we're doing our devotions which is a blessing i love it and i thank god that you do but some of us the rush with which we do it we don't gain anything because we just rush try to figure out find out something so we can share and that's the end of the story but that's not quality it's, it doesn't really bring the quality that we want you to have and you know so you are reading the bible at least the devotion but ask yourself is it manifesting in your walk with the lord or in your life are we seeing that in our lives are we seeing changes in our lives are we really uh, beginning to uh, have our minds renewed and uh, our lives transform so we can really boldly say that we're living the life that Christ wants us to live. Amen. So these are the things that for me, um, in the last couple of days, I have really seen and I have, I have come to the conclusion that um, if we don't really be a little bit bold in saying what we have to say but not only saying it but continue to pray that there will be that the words that we speak will be powerful enough to bring change in the lives of the people amen because in um hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 can you quickly Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says something. He says that uh, for the word of God is alive and active. Uh, why do you have all these things on? Because it looks like you just put in pressure on me here. For the word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It does what it judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart now let me ask you a question if you come to church and the word of god is preached does it begin to judge your thoughts and your attitudes if it begins to do that beloved i want you to understand that you are hearing the word of god if it's not just making you excited and jumping around and that's just uh, dancing some kind of dance and uh, but it's really judging you the your your thoughts and the attitudes of your heart then beloved you know you are hearing the word of god and if you are hearing the word of god then you have to take it serious you have to take it serious um, I was asking some people, I don't know when, but I was, I was saying that, but why is it that of late, I mean, you, you're not too excited about uh, preaching. <laughs> and the person said, what comes to, I mean, that, that, that's a personal thing the person said. He said, what comes to me by the time you finish speaking i am analyzing it in such a way that there is no time to jump around there is no time to clap it's all time of reflection amen 
so the point I'm trying to make is that then let's use it if it's bringing us to a point of reflection and it's judging our thoughts and attitude, the attitudes of our hearts then we need to go to the next step not only allowing it to judge our thoughts and the uh, attitude of our heart but now we need to begin to manifest it we need to begin to manifest it how do we man you see if you are hearing something that is not that is challenging what you are doing the manifestation will come in the form of you leaving that thing but if you are hearing something that is challenging you because you are not doing it then the manifestation is that you begin to do it so it comes to let you stop certain things or leave certain things but it also really comes to strengthen you to do other things hallelujah so tonight i will continue from where we left off last week we're looking at uh, romans chapter 12 uh, verse 2b and i think we spoke about um okay all right yeah oh um but be transformed by the renewing of your mind be transformed by the renewing of your mind we ought to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and um we we basically were trying to look at what what uh transformation really is i said uh, I, I i told you that i didn't want to go too much deep into that but i believe that i still would be um okay to to say a couple of things about that amen okay so the word there i mean let me show you let me quickly i mean i i, I don't think i can pronounce it don't worry about me it's it's something that I may not be able to pronounce it the way that amen okay but whatever it is just take it like that <laughs> uh okay it's uh okay yeah i think i can do that meta metamorpho i mean like it's uh because we know metamorphosis but it's the same word so it's uh meta more than the last it's p h o uh Oh, and some kind of Greek because the Greek word amen <laughs> okay but it says that to change the external form transfigure or to change one's form be transfigured and that is why last week I was telling you that it's always I mean uh, compared to that word is it's the same word they use for the tran transfiguration of Jesus Christ so uh, we need to really basically understand that but he's talking about a spiritual transformation a spiritual transformation you know what happens is that my, most of us and the reason it's be transformed by the renewing of your mind is that the transformation is an outward thing but then because you need to manifest an outward thing that is why he added by the renewing of your mind so that your inner man is not left out hallelujah so what this uh verse um to be is saying is that but be transformed not only outwardly but also inwardly by the renewing of your mind so you know many people I, I, and i wrote this i said transformation would not last when the mind is not renewed hallelujah transformation is will not last when the mind is not renewed because if the mind is not renewed you will see certain that's why you see a lot of christians they begin to do certain things but it doesn't last because the mind is not renewed the mind is not renewed but when the mind is renewed it then begins to control and and if the mind is filled with the thoughts of god it begins to manifest in your life and if, and it doesn't i mean like you begin somewhere and progressively you see yourself growing in the things of the lord because you see yourself begin to manifest the glory of god so 
you start from somewhere definitely and you know that oh yeah i'm doing it but i'm not even doing it well but then suddenly because your mind is renewed and it keeps renewing you see yourself being able to go to the next step and the next step so the things that yesterday you didn't when you heard it you didn't really worry too much about it when you hear it today you you begin to worry about it because you just tell yourself that that's not right but yesterday you didn't know it wasn't right amen or you didn't feel it wasn't right but then today you realize that no this is not right that's the what the bible is talking about he is not talking about the transformation that today you are so aggressive that this is not right why did you say that then tomorrow you now become part of it and you are enjoying it which is how many of us are living our lives now we hear a word we come to church we hear a very powerful message or we read the bible we he, we see something that is so powerful and really immediately we begin to when we go out on that day we walk like we don't want to step on an ant everything we have become holy immediately but because it's not deep rooted and our minds have not been renewed what happens is that we will only go so far by the next day you begin to now accept the very things you refused yesterday true or false and many of us are like that why because our minds have not been re renewed we have we we just yes we had something and we have not taken time to really work on ourselves allowing the holy spirit one thing that really breaks my heart in these last days is these are the times that we need the holy spirit the most but this is the time we are neglecting him the most hallelujah the times we are in these are the times we need him the most these are the times we need him to hold our hands and take us. Do you know why? Let me tell you. I'll tell you why I'm saying what I'm saying. Now, if you were in my, if you grew up in my days, it was very easy for scripture union and the others to let you, in fact, even if you don't go to church, you know what church people do. I said, even if you don't go to church, you know what the church people do. So you know what is right and you know what is wrong. True or false? Yeah. But today, can you tell me what church people do? Can you tell me? And what is different? What church people do that is different from the world? I mean, that, that that's nothing. I mean, because lifestyle, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of dressing, in terms of everything, in terms of even the songs that we hear. Now, listen to me carefully. Do you realize that we are forcefully trying hard to bring secular music to church? Do you know how we're doing that? Let me tell you. It's all coming from the collaborations that is happening. So we are, look, the devil is wicked. What the devil is doing now is now letting your popular musician say that it is not wrong to collaborate with a secular musician. So now you are confused. If my popular gospel musician is collaborating with somebody who is singing so much deep into secular things then it means it's right when the bible is saying that let us fill our spirit with songs of so, so, uh, uh, psalms and uh what and and songs of the spirit we are the gospel musician who sorry <laughs> i don't want to go there i don't want to go there because because you see they they are telling you things that are not right and they are trying to just you see let me tell you something i, I can't I, there are certain things i can't say to you tonight because some some sometimes you you look at atmosphere and the people are not ready for it so you can't even talk about it hallelujah 
I, I can't say certain things to you and my spirit is filled but I can't tell you certain things because I'm seeing certain things I'm seeing certain adverts I'm seeing certain collaborations and I'm asking myself I'm questioning myself who is who, who is directing these people I'm questioning myself I'm, I'm asking that look how, when, when did we see Jesus collaborating like that when, when the Bible is saying that what does light have with darkness and now we are saying light and darkness can merge that's what we you see so it's difficult for you to draw the line that's why you need the Holy Spirit now more than ever because he's the only one who can help you draw the line your pastor cannot help you I'm telling you he is the only one who can help you to draw the line because some of us as pastors are confused because some of us are afraid of the bashing because if you say anything now for the sake of um, um, social media and everything the whole world will hear it the next day and the comments will start coming and who won negative comments so nobody wants to say anything hallelujah but let's say it let's say it don't be afraid that you are small and nobody knows you it doesn't matter say what God wants you to say say it where are we going we're trying to win the world but the world is winning us we try you see wh what has happened to us as christians is that we we <laughs> oh my goodness we are trying to win the world the wrong way so you know what we're doing come you come I go to him, I talk to him about Jesus and my focus is not really getting this guy to be transformed but getting him to sit on the seat. Bringing him to church. Bring him to church. So evangelism now is not about making disciples but about bringing people to church. So they come to church unrepentant sit in church so do believers everybody see them in church so they see them as believers but they so do believers false believers I wouldn't say unbelievers because because they they, they said something so they but they are false believers so they sit in church as false believers and unfortunately they corrupt the church so we fill in our pews with <laughs> people who are not ready to really live the life of Christ not ready not willing and they come and they sit here with us and they begin like yeast corrupt the rest and we are unfortunately not talking sit down where are we going where are we going where are we going where are we going my goodness where are we going jesus have mercy jesus have mercy Ah, mm -hmm. 
I just want us to really understand that there is something we have to do, all of us. And if we don't begin to do anything, if we relax and not do anything, we will very soon be sorry or will very soon come to the realization that we have destroyed not only ourselves, but destroyed the church. Hallelujah. And I believe that that's not what you want to do, or that's what you want to do. So if that's not what we want to do, then we need to begin to sit up and begin to really take things serious. I love you. That's why I'm speaking to you the way I'm speaking to you. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Only one lover here. <laughs> the rest don't. <laughs> but that's fine. It's, it's okay. But even if you don't love me, I still love you. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you see, what I want you to understand is that everyone sitting here tonight is a potential disciple maker. Not only are you a disciple, but you're a disciple maker. You have the capacity and the potential to really minister to other people. Why? Because of the spirit that lives in you. Because of the spirit that lives in you. Last Sunday, I made you understand. I don't know whether it was Sunday or it was uh, Thursday. I've lost count of everything anyway. But it's one of those days. I, I made you understand that the spirit that is in me is the same spirit that is in you. The spirit that is in the one sitting by you is the same spirit that is in you, unless you are not of God. But if you are of God, it's the same spirit. One spirit, not two, not three, one. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives in you and that lives in me. So if the same spirit lives in us, then the same spirit will do things with us. So whatever he uses Joseph to do, he will use me to do. Whatever he uses the day to do, he will use Seram to do. Whatever he uses Seram to do, he will use, uh, what's your name again? Ishmael to do. And whatever he uses Ishmael to do, he will use Regina to do. God is not really segregating. He's willing and ready to use any of us to do whatever he wants to do. But have we made ourselves available for the spirit that has come to live in us to do what he wants to do with us? That's where the problem is. And the only way we can do that is to begin to have our minds renewed and to know that we are new creation. We are not the same people that we were. If we were in the world, we were different. Now that we have come to Christ, we are new creation. You need to begin. Many of us have not really gotten that into our minds, into our heart, that we are new. So we still see ourselves as the same old people. That is why we are able to say that, oh, as for this thing, I can't stop. If the spirit of God lives in you, it's not about that I can't stop because the spirit enables me to stop. You understand? It, it's not by our strength too. It's him working through us. That's what the Bible says. So if he is working through me, if I avail myself, then it's not about I cannot do it, but he will do it through me. That's why Paul said, I can do all things. Not because I am nice, not because I'm powerful, but through who strengthens me so he doing everything is not because he can do but because christ is doing it through him hallelujah so we need to begin to understand the spirit that is in us and i have said it this evening that this is the time we need him the most the times we are in is the times that we need the Holy Spirit the most. Because these are the times that it's so difficult to draw the line between what is right and wrong. 
This is the time because the, you see, you 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 <laughs> you love someone. Maybe you know a preacher that you love that you probably have followed for the last uh, how many years of your Christian life. And suddenly he's saying something that is really contradicting scripture. Yes. If the spirit of God is not leading you, you'll take it lying who can sink her. And if you take it, you are doomed. Hallelujah. Say, I need you, Holy Spirit. Come help me. Amen. All right, okay. So I'm going to quickly um, go through uh, a few points how we can renew our minds and then we will close uh, for tonight. Beloved, if we want our mind to re be renewed, the only thing we have to do is to watch what we feed our mind with. Hallelujah. I feel there are no 10 ways, 11 ways, 12 ways. If we can watch what we feed our mind with, a lot will change with us. Hallelujah. So A, let us watch what we read. Let us be careful about what we read. We are looking at how we can renew our mind. We need to be cautious and careful about what we read. You, whatever you are reading, ask yourself, what is this adding to my life? Is it adding things that will let me grow in the Lord or it's taking me away from the Lord? Is it making my faith stronger? Or because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So reading the word of God will have to build up your faith. But what you are hearing, you know, some of, some of us, after reading certain things that we read, we begin to, cook, I mean, challenge the, the, the word of God. You didn't hear that. I said, <laughs> some of us, the things we read after we've read them it makes us challenge the word of god so why do you go and read it why do you go and read it if that thing is going to distract you from what the bible is saying beloved why do you read it we need to be careful so that we don't really push things, bad literature, into our minds. Because as we read, remember that you are feeding your mind. And what anyone who knows about computers knows that what you give it is what it's going to really bring out to you. So if you are putting in junk, junk is going to come out. And if you are, some of us, we need to stop reading secular books because we can't handle it. We cannot. You build yourself in your most holy faith for over a period of time. And then suddenly, and I say suddenly, you go and read one book and it challenges everything that you have really studied in the Bible. And you begin to question the Bible and question a lot of things. Hallelujah. And this is not, I'm not even, I've not even gone to really you reading sexually explicit uh, stuff. I'm just even talking about normal, uh, I mean, kind of uh, um, uh, fictional books and uh, you know it's surprise listen to me carefully it surprises me especially to the young ones it surprises me when Christian youths are reading romance books what does it add to your life can you tell me and you enjoy it. It 
if you keep feeding your mind with that what you're going to do is going to really find a way to try it what you are reading so it fills up your mind and when it fills up your mind now instead of thinking about what is above you're thinking about what is underneath somebody's dress why true or false even true you can't say hallelujah <laughs> okay all right enough of that you're not ready for it so let's move to the next one <laughs> be careful <laughs> of what you watch be careful of what you watch many of us as Christians we don't even watch Christian movies how many of us are sitting here tonight but are still watching secular, I mean like worldly uh, movies? Okay, all right. What do you learn out of that? How many Christian movies have you watched? Huh? What? <laughs> Who watches movies here? What movies do you watch? Hallelujah. You know, let's be careful. Let's be very careful. And let me ask just a simple question. And I, I just want any of you who watch movies can answer. I mean, just don't feel bad about it we're not judging you we're not condemning you we just need to be educated here this evening okay um the movies you watch does it sometimes really turn you away a little bit from god make you getting get not even to go and do but make you think about some ungodly stuff anyone can answer i mean those who watch movies. Regina. Movie now watch no. E ye etwe wa dwene ko si bibia enye rade so. Em 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 boa wo nya mi so mu. Yanti o. Okay. Right. Okay, we better turn us in. Do we agree? moving do we all agree okay so if we agree why do we then watch hmm? hallelujah okay all right so why do we watch oh tell me charles why do you watch I saw your hand up. So why do you watch? I'm not a fan of movies. Mine is games. Say again. I'm not a fan of movies. No, I'm not saying you're a fan. Do you watch? You lifted up your hand. That's why I'm asking you. Or you didn't lift up your hand. Yeah, I you are not a fan, but you don't re like you don't watch all the time, but you sometimes watch. Yes. 
Yeah, that's what we're talking about. If even you watch one and it distract, you know, somebody can watch ten, it won't distract them. But when you watch one, so one, one is enough. Hmm? <laughs> okay. She says that watching movie sometimes will distract you to I mean to focus on things that are ungodly. And my question is that and I mean all those who watch movie agreed with that. So my question is that why do you then watch something that will take you off God? When the flesh is in the flesh, you No, you see, um, okay, you finish and then let me say what I'll say. When the flesh is alive, even though you know it is not going to help, but there's still desire to go and watch. So that's why. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, beloved, I thought Jesus said we should deny the flesh. Don't we have to crucify it? That's why Paul said in Romans that if we are dead, why are we still alive in the same things? The things that we are dead to, we are still alive in them. Why? Hmm? Is, is it not strange that we all, or we don't know that we have to die to the self, to the flesh? Hmm? We don't know. We know. So why is the let's let's read the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, let's go to Colossians. Amen. Um, Colossians chapter 3. Uh, chapter 2 verse 13. Quickly and then I'll just... It's, I just want us to look at that. I don't, I don't want us to even go into the uh, Romans 6. But okay. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh... God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Uh, 14. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. 15. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made his public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. 16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon uh, celebration or a Sabbath day. Now, he's saying that we as Christians, when we came to Christ, we died to certain things. And how did we die to it? Go back to um, 13. Let me... Yeah, when we... we when we were in the world we were dead in our sins and in the uncircumcision of our flesh but then god made you alive me and you with christ he forgave us all our sins now my question is that we were dead in something and we will have been made alive why do we die again into that same thing the things that we were in doing now because of christ you know the way I look at the scripture, I look at it in this way, that we were dead, so we didn't know. You understand? If, for example, if, if I'm, you know, there are people that are so much like, I don't want to use certain words, but they are so much, let's say, fornication into fornication that they don't see anything wrong with it they are used to it they are dead in it i mean it's like they don't feel anything bad about it but the moment they came to christ and became alive in christ 
now they began to see how dead they were and how where they were and now we we become we we are forgiven and we become united with christ and we begin to manifest what christ does that's why bible says that we are what mm -hmm. last week we looked at it please don't just uh, uh huh we are what created in god to do what in true when you go back you don't you don't you don't you don't you don't do anything about it because i was expecting that by this time it sunk inside that you are saying that i'm a new creation in christ and i'm a new creation in god and i'm supposed to do what live in true righteousness and holiness not some fake righteousness hallelujah so he makes us new to live a certain kind of new life so we become alive the things that we didn't know they were sinful now we become alive and we know that you know somebody who is dead who is dead doesn't know that uh there are ants around do they feel it so even when ants are i mean worms are eating their bodies they can't really respond but the moment you become alive you know that no this is a worm so i don't have to there's an ant this is this, this so you begin to respond hallelujah but how come we say we are alive in christ but we still don't feel the sin and run away from it i, I don't know if you understand you don't Motina make an assay. Me say, say, you will be asking. No, you're a bonny bee. A son say, say, woe, I was a nipple who are. Woe, bonna soon grunty. Say, nipple wound as a tetty a cana, otte. Otte. Onte, okay. Ain't you no, nay, you woo. Ain't you see your bread, Jamaya, you muse a bonny. Ye can't say money and ye nim say ye bonny. Ye just say and one is a ye yako. Anami wa. But the moment ye ba a radimuno, ne hum crum crum ba ye muno, we become alive in Christ. So now we begin to see what is wrong. In tinteti ye ba, says ye obey then. In tadden is ye still in tete ye ba, now we'll sign to you. Huh? Hallelujah. First in Kenya, me name say Jamaya Boni. Me wu, e wu. In Tia Nwane say me me de me bo me life uko. But you see, my boy Christo mu me wu say e ye de e ye Boni. In Tia me wu say e Boni. I'm now alive and I know what is wrong and what is right. So why is it that if it's coming, I still can't really challenge it? I still can't really run away from it. I still can't do anything about it, but I embrace it and I get involved with it. Why is it so? Yeni brebe brain ti won kasa ni yanko. Adenti neti sa. E mre mi pesi ye di nko mo keke. I mean, I just want us to really understand. Inti me di me di abaf form. Inti me pesi mo kasa. I mean. Hello, are you here? Ah, no more. I have your monk. I say, hmm, talk, brother. So, what's the problem? Why is it that I've come to Christ? I am now alive, but still ants are eating me and i can't really do this now i can feel it or i still can't feel it I, I, you can feel it so why is it that the ants are biting you and you are still not saying anything it depends on you. what it depends on you. 
It depends on you. In the sin. Ah, I say, mean, I mean, so where is Christ? Because I'm supposed to be alive in Christ. Okay, so this means you are not really okay. Remove the you and then put I. And say it well. Okay. This means I'm not repenting. Yeah, I'm not repenting. Like, I'm not repenting. So, what do we want to do? Is there anything we can do to help you to repent properly? That's the problem, man. He says that's a problem. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, he says that's a problem. So, how can we resolve this problem? Because you've told me this evening that the word comes, it convicts you. So, if the word convicts you, why is it that we are not being, uh, our minds are not being renewed? This thing, eh, we probably may do some more days because I just want us to really be free. Amen. So that we can break off the things that are holding us back. I know, look, I love you and I know you. I know that many of us sitting here, we don't want what we do. We wish we are free from it. Now, and we hear the word of God, but we're still not free. We We are still not able to come out of it. Now, what is it? Yes, Charles, thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the cause. Mm-hmm. Monday, you said something that we try to work it by ourselves instead of really allowing ourselves or just giving ourselves to God. So we try to work on it and it becomes like kaka kaka. So I believe it's not, when it becomes that, it's not about the Holy Spirit anymore. It becomes about we using our own physical strength to do it. So I believe that's one of the cause. We just don't allow God to do what He has to do with our but We we give our time, ourselves time to really change. Amen. I like that. We we set times for ourselves to change. If you set a time for yourself to change, it's about you, it's not about the Holy Spirit. It, you have not availed to him. You are not allowing him to do the work in you. He wants you to come just as you are. But he wants you to submit to him. He wants you to say that, look um i like that song i give myself away so i give myself away to you i'm totally committed to you i know it's not going to be easy but i i just am committed to it whatever you want to use me to do just go ahead and do it yes it's not going to be easy who said it's going to be easy there's a there's a cost to pay there's a price to pay there's a price to pay i want each and every one to understand that there is a price to pay there's a price to pay for holiness there's a price to pay for righteousness there's a price to pay even for friendships i mean there's a price to pay you you can't run away from it there's a price to pay there's a price to pay to speak the truth there's a price sometimes it's very expensive sometimes it's very expensive sometimes sometimes the price you have to pay is so huge that you 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 look foolish in the eyes of people that i mean people that you you really i mean they would have respected you now you look stupid to them and they can do whatever and say whatever they want to say to you just because you have stood for the truth and that's a huge price if you don't really die to self it's going to be very difficult for you to avail i'm telling you because there are times you just 
would sometimes even ask yourself lord what's going on what's going on you ask yourself what's going on then you say that i'm all for this ready to pay any price as long as souls can be touched lives can be changed i'm ready for everything i'm ready to be that doormat for people to walk over me so they can know christ if that will own that's only what they want to be able to serve and go to heaven i'm ready to be that doormat hallelujah because it's not easy there is a price that you have to pay and in this evening's teaching some of the price that we have to pay is to really forgo what we enjoy the things you enjoy watching when you were dead in your sins today you have to be ready to let go maybe that's what gives you joy but there is so much joy in the lord that you have not found begin to search for that begin to search for that you see many of us because we don't know what is in god we we think that there is nothing in him a bimu feel say we be jamie mu ayare hunko to heaven who told you that who told you that i rejoice every day and paul said it rejoice in the lord i say to you rejoice Rejo let's rejoice in the lord there's so much in him look let me tell you something sometimes when you are reading the bible alone you are sitting down and you are laughing and you are enjoying what you are reading because you just get run revelation and it just blows your mind and you alone you are there and you are just sometimes you you even shout wow and then you check whether there is somebody watching has it happened to you before because you get it and you just it gives you joy joy immeasurable you can't measure that joy it's not a joy that dies the ne next minute and you know what the joy that comes to you you begin you become crazy you want to share it with everyone you want everybody to know your new revelation hallelujah that's the joy we're talking about so don't 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 think that yeah but this is what i enjoy i watch this it's corrupting you and you yourself have said that it corrupts you if it's corrupting you then do what job did job chapter 31 verse 1 I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. Take you, I know you are holy. You don't look at young women lustfully. Or you, you do. Young guys, do you do? No. The no crowd in the Hallelujah. <laughs> but you take out the look lustfully at young men. Just say that i make i may i not i made i make a covenant with my eyes not watch any movie that does not honor god make that covenant you see you make a covenant with your eye not to watch any pornography again whether it's hardcore or it's hidden in movies you know some of you when you say you watch I say, hey, no no me i don't watch pornography but you watch it every day in the movies you are watching they are giving you they have hidden it inside the movies for you because what you say that oh that's with me i won't go and watch that uh, but the same feeling you get watching hardcore you get watching this one too true or false I think we have to close tonight you guys are not ready for this <laughs> you
You know, if if you if you that's why Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, on, <laughs> I'll also be ashamed. You see, if you are ashamed to really tell the devil that ah, you are a liar, this is what you've been doing to me. If you are hiding and trying to hide, and uh, when you go home, to you go and watch again. No, that's the truth. Because if you own up to it, you're going to really, you, you know it's wrong. So you're going to really begin to pray against it and get away from it. Hallelujah. After, after you watch her straight to the bathroom, you're going to masturbate. If there is no woman there, if then you take your phone. Now you are making foolish calls. True or false? Yeah. Hallelujah. No, these are the realities of our lives today. But we, you see, that we, we have really taken that away from the pulpit. So the church members think it's okay to watch. Amen. They think it's okay. Meanwhile, they are dying. So every message you preach, when they go, they dilute it with that. So by the time they sleep and get up the next morning, they've forgotten about it. Because the movie now sticks in their mind and their eyes and their spirit that they don't even remember the quotation you gave in church. Memory verse, a kokra. Hallelujah. Every anointing that came is diluted. Now, we don't go even to neutral. We go back to negative. You can laugh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, so let's be mindful of what we watch. And let's make a covenant with our eyes. Because if you don't do that, beloved, you see, it's like what we're saying is, but it's corrupting you. And the things you watch, they stick in your mind. Even the music you listen, they stick in your mind. Have you seen, I mean, because when you were coming to church, that's the song you were playing in your car. When you go to the lobby, that's what you are singing. You forgot that you were in church. What? <laughs> Shatawali. Uh -huh. So you 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 just you just uh enjoyed listening to it and you were singing along. And you bend you now for once I was you in an auto. So when you came up here, it's still in your mind. By the time I a radia sembi to me, what white dream was a song. What's what's on your late? Who buy a worship area? Because in Kawuba, they are here worshiping. Kebi and can worship and be neutralized, you know. But you were late, so by the time you came, worship is finished. Now we are preaching, but you still thinking about the song. Into ye be we no one teshi no asa to aso atu kufi. Hallelujah. Let's be careful. Everything you watching is imprinting something in your mind and it's not easy to erase these things it's not so you don't have to continue to put these things in your mind you need to begin if you want to renew your mind you need to begin to stop watching the things you are watching you need to stop watching because if you don't stop you will keep watching and they will poison your mind amen hallelujah what do you feed your mind with what do you listen to now we know you have to be careful about what you read careful about what you watch and now what you listen the kind of music we listen to Let's quickly read these scriptures. I mean, I will just make it quick and then we can move on. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. 
For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what they are itching ears to want to hear. What do you want to hear and what are you hearing? What do you listen to? What message do you listen to? I am not even going to songs and things like that, but I'm going right to messages that... You see, some of us, we, we have really intentionally decided to listen to certain kind of messages. So, anything that concerns holiness, we don't want to hear. Anything that concerns um, um, uh, um, righteousness, we don't want to hear. Anything concerning money, hey, yes. So we go browse and check in what, uh, who is giving the 10 steps to get rich. Who is giving a prophecy that I will go to America. Who is giving this. And we keep really feeding ourselves with these things. So everything about us, instead of we uh, uh, thinking about what is, about, what, what is in, in heaven, what is above, and really um, just focusing on it. Now, we're thinking about how we can do, do this, get this, do this, get that. And I'm saying that if you are not careful, I'm not even talking about the conversations you get involved in. I'm talking about the songs you're listening to, the messages you're listening to. Those ones, they are not conversations that you are even involved. Hallelujah. But you choose to watch those things uh, i mean listen to those things and as you listen to them they corrupt you first timothy 4 7 first timothy 4 7 have nothing to do with godless mates and old wife tales rather train yourself to be godly have nothing to do with godless meat mates you know some people they just get involved with all kinds of finances and all kinds of stories look i don't care who bashes and who do what but what i'm trying to say is that i i once went to watch what how do you call that a thousand and one laughs or whatever i i i mean you remember that thing do they still do it okay all right i i once uh I mean, somebody <laughs> bought a ticket and everything and then uh, took me there. Long ago, probably, uh, very long ago, maybe over 10 years ago. Yeah, probably maybe 15 years ago. And I remember I got angry sitting there. I'm telling you the truth. I was angry because they will make mockery of everything, including God. The jokes the the um the things people are and then christians are laughing at ah, then they fall down and i'm sitting there angry in my spirit but i can't do anything hallelujah because i'm sitting there and i'm forced to listen and they're making mockery of my god and making mockery of christianity the very thing that my life depends on the very thing that I stand for. And I made a vow never, ever to go to anything like that again. And I have never, ever gone to anything like that again. Yes. Somebody would have to really sit up and make decisions. We have to because we can't we, we can't say we want to serve God and yet sit down for people to make mock. You see, sometimes the uh, look, we all still work with people who are not Christians. True or false? But let us not get involved with the conversations. Let's get straight with the work we do with them. And not get involved with the after after business uh, uh, conversations. They are not going to be healthy. If you want to talk to them, be bold. If they are bold to talk to you about the foolish things they want to talk to you about, be bold to talk to them about Christ. 
unfortunately we are even afraid and shy to talk about jesus with them but they are bold and solid to talk about everything that is so ungodly they are bold to discuss it with us and we are foolish enough to listen and talk about it as well look this is very simple it's very simple if we are not going to sit up to what we believe in and be bold that's why jesus said that those of you who are ashamed of me i will also be ashamed of you we when we get to places we are afraid this this guy that i met you oh but so what are you doing i said i do two things i work as a consultant and i'm a pastor i'm bold to talk about it when we were leaving the place we couldn't get exactly what we went to do but when we were leaving i told because we looked at the time and we realized that if we are not careful we'll be late in church so we have to come back home really we needed to pray we needed to do a couple of things before we get here so i said i told mommy uh we have to leave so we were going to leave and i told the lady who was really because there was something they had to look for us and they couldn't find and everything and they were delaying us so i said i told the lady i said i have to be in church to teach so i have to go home and refresh myself prepare and then go and teach and she looked at my face oh why oh You know, there are places when you talk, when you say you're a pastor, everybody, yeah, I'm a pastor. I love it. Insult me. I'm still happy. Hallelujah. Say whatever you want to say. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you. You'll be shocked. Somebody told me today. He said, there are, if, if you want to really make it today, there are three things. Hallelujah. <laughs> he says there are three things number one to start a church yes that's what he said number two to do drugs to sell drugs number three to be a politician this and he said i've chosen to be a politician that's what he told me he said there are three things and I said, yeah. <laughs> I, I told the person, I said, I'm a pastor. But I, I'm not enriching myself with being a pastor. If God blesses me, God is not blessing me because I'm a pastor, because I'm living for him. It's not because I, I, I have a church. No, that's not it. He said, then he mentioned some things. <laughs> I said, please, I'm not like that. He said, I know you. I know that's what you say. I know you. So, but I said, look, take that out of your mind. He says, "One on twin preaching to one for a politician, you'll be able to hear." And he, after I say, he can't sell cocaine, so he can't go there. He can't preach, so he can't do bad for politician. Everybody, so he chose to be a politician. So he's a politician. Hallelujah! Who are you? Which of the three? <laughs> huh? Which of the three? And because of these things, some of us, we are, you know, a lot of you Christians, you are afraid to talk, that, to, to, talk to people about the fact that you are a Christian. True or false? You are afraid. Why? Because of the way they will brand you. People are even now thinking that Christians are people of inferior mindset. You, you have no idea people are thinking that we, we we don't think right christians don't think right what they hate to hear is faith they think that we are foolish enough to believe somebody will say that have you seen jesus before has jesus given you food to eat they say all kinds of things and we are unable to defend our faith because we don't know anything about our faith hallelujah and they are able to say these things to us because we are watching the same thing with them listening to the same thing with them in fact when they are discussing uh, all kinds of uh, uh, 
movies, whatever, we are number one. Amen. So, we have to be careful to not just really get involved with all kinds of old wife tales. Just let's get serious with what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19. I just want to be quick here and then I just have, I think, a couple of, what is the time? Yeah. Okay. So, what do you listen to as music bible is saying that we need to speak to one another with psalms hymns and songs from the spirits not songs from wherever you want to call it but songs from the spirit and make music from your heart can you sing that song to the lord No, 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 no. Bible says sing and make music from your heart to who? The song that you are singing, can you sing it to the Lord? Huh? The music that you listen to, can you listen to that music with the Lord? No, we have to be frank with ourselves. My question is that what kind of songs do you listen to? What kind of songs? Hmm? Are they gospel music? And even what kind of gospel music? Hmm? You and God, can you sit together and listen to that song you are listening to? Hmm? If it's not possible, then why are you listening? Why do you still play that same song? Why? What's the problem? Why do you make it look like God is unable to give you anything? But anything from the devil entices you. It surprises me. My question is, why? What's going on? Beloved, are we here? Do we understand are we ready to make a change? Because if we have to renew our mind so that our lives will be transformed, then we need to watch these things. Let's watch what we hear. I mean, we read. Let's watch what we uh, watch. Let, I mean, let's be careful about what we watch. Let's be careful about what we listen to. I mean, uh, there are other things that I can't talk about, but let's move on. Hallelujah. And now let's get to what we discuss the conversations we get involved in first colossians chapter four eh, sorry i said first colossians colossians chapter four verse six let your conversation be what always Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. What kind of conversations are we talking about? Are those conversations seasoned with salt? Are the conversations we get ourselves involved in, do they honor the name of God? When we sit down with friends, what do we talk about? does it edify the body does it edify us do we leave our i mean if you are conversing with someone do you come out of that conversation being edified in christ or you come out of that conversation corrupted what are you yourself saying and what is that person saying to you Bible says that let us not allow any unwholesome talk to come out of our mouths. Let us not allow. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let us not allow unwholesome. You see, we, we, the way we talk 
Bible is saying that let us not, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And some of cannot, does it benefit those who listen in the Lord? What are we doing, beloved, in the Lord? What are we doing as Christians? You guys, you guys in school, who, who do you talk to? What conversation do you get involved in? Is it corrupting you? Is it really just making your mind go in a direction you don't want your mind to go? And you always sit in there listening to it? When there are when 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 a lecturer is not in and some guy is fooling in, in, in the lecture room, do you sit down to just enjoy it? Hallelujah. You you laughing, you enjoy it, eh? Huh? Hmm? But it happens. It happens. It happens. In, so many times. Not many times. But you sit there and enjoy. It happens many times. It happens many times. Not many times. Okay. But for you, many times. Okay. Hallelujah. But my question is that what happens to us? Amen. You, sorry. Who quit Jumemoa and come over now? Can you understand what I'm saying? Listen, that's the reality in your office. In your office, when they are talking, what do you do? Do you contribute or you leave? Or you sit down and you ask them, let's focus on our jobs. Today we went somewhere. We sat there for about one hour. I don't know whether they were working and talking. We were, we were not in the, we were sitting in the lobby somewhere, and the, the, I mean, I, and I'm asking myself, where mu, omu jari anapa so mu bae juma? No mu ape ye juma, ana so mebo komo. Hmm? Some time ago, minister, you told me a story. Hallelujah. He's here, so I'll say it. He said he gave somebody some work to do. And, Later in the day, he went to the person's desk and the person was sitting there doing all kinds of things on the computer. He said, ah, but have you finished that? He says, break. It's, when we are a human, but when your time is the shot, they fall Something that has nothing to do with the job. Meanwhile, the job that you are doing, you have not even finished. Hallelujah. And then when you are sad, you say that the bosses are bad. We have a deadline. We have to finish this work. You say break. What is break when there is deadline? Hmm? Ask the people who do serious, business, serious jobs and ask them when there is a deadline. Madam, when there is a deadline, is there anything? Do you even remember you have children? Huh? You forget you have children when there is deadline. If you are not careful, you forget there is God. I'm telling you the truth. If you are not careful, even church, you say church, you wait. And then you have time to sit down and watch, go from Facebook, watch all kinds of things. Amen. What kind of conversation do you get involved in? 
I remember some time ago when we when we began uh, KPGM, we were downstairs and uh, there was uh, those days we had Bible studies like this. We we were not many. We were like probably twenty or something or less. So we we just sit round. We do like a round table and we just sit and we talk. And, uh, and I remember there was one day there's this lady who basically was saying, "No, no, 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 me, I don't really." And I said, "Oh, but you see, I can. I still hang out with my." He said, "Oh, uh, uh, how do you call that thing? Uh, old uh, school, old school mates." Uh, old students whatever so they hang out they meet at a place and then oh but they drink beer and things me i drink coke but i still really manage myself then we went on and then i, I mean i was explaining that you see the more you say that the more you get corrupted and then she, she wouldn't budge she said that she is able to do that and is able to balance it so we moved on like 20 minutes later she raises her hands the holy spirit convicts her she raises her hand. At the same meeting, you know, and then he said, "Okay, yes. Do you have a question?" I said, "No, I have a confession." <laughs> and I said, "What is it?" She said, "Yeah, I just remembered that. In fact, most of the time it's gossip." Uh, he said, "We talk about some friends. Eh, wait, yeah, no, I basa, no, wait, yeah, no, juma, wait, yeah, obi school, yeah, muni, just say gossip, sir." He said, I have never thought about it that way. But as I was sitting here, you know, and she herself said that, you know, I defended it. But as I, we moved on and the uh, teaching was going on, she said, now I really was convicted that, and I began to think about what we talk about. And I realized everything was gossip. Not a single day they spoke about Jesus not a single day they spoke about how they can get their business running it's only gossip but a christian was sitting there gossiping every day and did not even realize it that what it took one bible study meeting like this to really come to the realization that she's been gossiping all along because they're talking about other schoolmates, those who have made it, those who haven't made it, those who are now something, something, and then that's all that they do. What about you? In that same meeting, she was able to confess. What are you confessing tonight? Don't confess to me. We're going to confess to God. Hallelujah. And the last thing I will say is uh, Philippians 4.8. what do you think about be careful about what you think about when you are alone finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things don't go and think about all kinds of if you don't see it here, don't think about it. Did you see money there? Hmm? Yes. So God knows what you need. He's going to fix you. He's going to make you well. He's not saying that don't plan, but he's saying that if you are thinking, just think about things that will bring him glory and he will give you ideas. Solomon didn't ask for wealth but yet he was given world. God knows it. He knows what you need. Hallelujah. Abraham looked at Lot. Listen to me carefully. Abraham looked at Lot and saw the, all the fighting that was going on. He said, take what you have. I mean, take what you want. He took the best plus trouble. Abraham looked at the rest and God said, I'm going to bless this for you. You see, you may have nothing, but God is going to bless the little that you have and make it big for you. Beloved, I want you to begin to renew this. And the only way you can get your mind focused and renewed so that your life... Will be, 
you will be transformed why am i saying this because listen if you begin to listen to the right stuff it's going to reflect in your life if you begin to watch the right stuff you'll see that it begins to manifest in your life if you begin to uh, uh, um, uh, share or get into conversations that are godly it begins to manifest in your life and if you begin to think about things that are noble lovely admirable anything that is excellent and praiseworthy then you realize that you begin to believe in it it doesn't take effort it will flow because the holy ghost begins to flow through you you don't many times i have told you that a lot of things that have really left my life and a lot of things that i have really been able to do as a christian living for christ i don't know when i began and i don't know when the evil ones or the bad things left my life because it was not by my effort it was effortless it was god himself working through me taking away the things that doesn't really honor his name and bringing the things that honor his name not because i am better than you but because i have veiled myself and all that i want you to do i made a decision not to watch certain movies i mean i don't watch movie i don't if i watch movie probably once in a while there's a christian movie and i'm watching it like um uh, uh, god is not dead and all kinds of things those things i just watch those ones but it's even not very often amen so begin to watch those ones if you don't really if we will be faithful to ourselves we would have even had a christian library here where we can pick new movies and watch and things like that i want us to really be able to share so if you find a christian movie that really encourage you you can talk to it about uh, talk to the day about it when you you see most of the time when we sit down what do we talk about what do we talk about let's begin to talk about things that are going to edify us oh yeah i watched this movie and i think it will be a blessing to you oh yeah I, I i read this scripture and i think i got a new perspective on what god was saying can we share it let's begin to do a lot more of that hallelujah you can you know a lot of uh, your friends uh, you can pick a phone and then call somebody and share something with the person not to tell the person oh you didn't come to church yesterday oh hey you know this sister when she came her hair cried the way it is you couldn't tell the person who didn't come to church about the message that was preached will be three weeks so when you came to church for somebody's hair why amen yeah because uh the the, the organist didn't play well so yeah and the praise is not the cry organizing me who baby i'm not then you know i'm crying and no pen who was sorry hallelujah when the organist was going way off did you pray for him hmm? but thank god do you go off sometimes no he doesn't go off amen when me, my wife, I and then the apostle knew me or fight went to me panto. Me preachy now went to me and come once up. And you were meant to me and to know. And in a heel. Sorry, no mom pie. Adiasa. Hallelujah. Beloved, come, let's pray on Saturday. I mean, we're still working on our mind. Yeah, you see, you people and your last minute, we ask her. <laughs> we give you every opportunity. But yes, let's ask your question. Let's uh, see. Daddy, it's about this song. Um, the storm is over. Mm -hmm. It was sung by our Kelly. It was later the right was bought by TBJ. Mm-hmm. 
Is it right to listen? Because the rights were it was sung by a secular person mm -hmm. later brought by this day. Okay. Is it right to listen to such a song? You know my views on these things. Yeah. I would say that is that the only song that you can listen. If you are not too sure about it, don't. If you are not too sure about it, don't. You see, um, there are there are a lot of songs that people have sung that maybe it was a situation they were in that really made them sing that song, and um, they they may be uh, it, it may be a secular song or whatever and it was the state they were in that made them sing that song now it may seem gospel but it is, is it gospel that's what i'm asking but is it so i'm asking is it gospel i'm like td jakes taking the part in singing it i was like a that is why i'm t telling you that the collaborations let's be careful <laughs> thank you you see, so if, if we, if, if all these, uh, it's serious. Listen, I'm not condemning no secular musician, but my question is that I'm a Christian. Let me stay focused on what God is asking me to do. Now, my collaboration with that, is that the only person I can collaborate with? Is it really edifying that person? Is it bringing that person to Christ? You know, what the mis many of the mistakes we are doing, and I, I, I am very cautious when I'm saying these things. My relationship with them, when Jesus met the woman with, uh, 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 whether it's prostitute or whatever, how many, Mary Magdalene, he cast out demon, she became a believer and followed him. How many of those people have we changed? We do the collaboration, they still do their thing nothing has happened to them so sometimes we say oh jesus went to the sinners when he went to the sinners when he went to zacchaeus house, what happened what happened have we done that are we changing the lives that we say we are going to so let us be careful because it's worrying i am not saying that yes we need to preach to them but let's preach to them let's stop really endorsing what they are doing if i'm collaborating i'm endorsing what they're doing so let me stop endorsing it they are look, listen to me carefully they are loved of god god loves them because he didn't his bible says he demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were still sinners christ died for us so when he loved me i was a sinner amen so god loves every sinner on the street but doesn't love their sin we need to really be clear on that he loves them but he doesn't love their sin so let's hate their sin so when we go to them we're not going to condemn them we're going to present the gospel but if by presenting the gospel we say that this act is sin and they think it is condemnation let it be so because how can anybody repent of something we endorse? If it's not a sin, we don't need repentance. So let's be frank and let's be straightforward. Because the, the way we've twisted Christianity and trying to make it better than Jesus did. I mean, how can, it's not possible. Hallelujah. So let's, I mean, uh, I mean, that's my, that's my view. And I don't care who collaborated. It doesn't really matter to me. What matters to me is that, <laughs> if that's it, is it coming from the one who called me? Amen. All right. Okay. I want you to pray. I mean, we, we, we have only some few minutes, so I just want you to begin to thank the Lord for tonight. Thank the Lord for tonight. Let's thank the Lord for tonight. Let's thank the Lord for tonight. Ma libro sonda ka libro shinde ke libro sonda ya. De radiasi anaji. De radiasi. De radiasi. De radiasi. De radiasi. En sembi o honu mwa yentante. Ba de radi mbayeti. 
if you say ready pasi ye hu bibi god is really uh bringing these to us because he he wants us to really change he wants something to be done he wants our lives to be uh what he wants us to be and therefore he's bringing us uh messages that are really challenging but they are good they edify the spirit they help us to grow in the lord so let's thank the lord for what he's given us tonight talk to him talk to him talk to him now begin to repent of anything that as the word came to you god began to really convict you of whatever you were convicted of whatever maybe the things you're listening the things you've been thinking about the things conversations you've been involved in things you are reading watching and listening whatever you've been doing that did not honor god but you didn't know but now you know begin to ask god to forgive you repent of it and then ask god to forgive you call on him and ask him that lord forgive me i repent tonight i repent i repent tonight so forgive me lord i repent tonight i repent i repent repent from everything that maybe you didn't know maybe you felt that i mean it, there was nothing wrong but tonight you have come to understand that you've made a lot of errors repent just repent just repent and ask god to forgive you ask him to forgive you ask him to forgive you ask the lord to forgive you just let him know that you don't want to go back to it as you are going to leave this place may he forgive you so that you don't go back to it may he forgive you ask the lord to forgive you he's uh, he says if you confess he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness god is willing and ready to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness so let's ask him let's ask him the lord is here I can I can really feel that the presence of the spirit of God I wish we had time to to really get into a, a, a deeper prayer but we we will do that on Saturday we will do that on Saturday so as you have really um, yielded to it what I want you to do now is to lift up your right hand And as you lift up your right hand, ask God that give me every grace that I need to begin to walk and live as you want me to. Tell him I cannot do it by myself. That's why I lift up my hands towards you and I ask you to help me. I can't do it by myself, Lord. I need you. I need your help. I need you to help me. I need you to help me.
Father, I thank you tonight in Jesus' name. I bless you for this house and for what you are teaching us and what you are bringing to us. So much for us to do. Father, sometimes we ask ourselves, why do you keep talking to us like this? But Lord, we know how much you love us and you don't want us to perish. I pray tonight in Jesus' name that as we lift up our hands, we surrender to you and say that, Lord, we have tried with our strength, but we have failed. We yield to you tonight. We submit to you tonight. And we ask you for the grace to stand still and firm and do what you have called us to do. May we be totally dependent on you, Spirit of God. I know many are struggling. Many, many of us are struggling. But Lord, we know you, that you have the power to help us overcome these struggles. So I pray right now, by the power in the name of Jesus, begin a new work in us tonight. Begin it tonight, Lord. Begin it tonight, Lord. Change our lives. Change our lives. Let us be renewed in our minds. And let, the, let us see a transformation of our lives. Holy Ghost, you love us. You love us. And we pray that you keep us. And help us. To overcome. These weaknesses. We thank you tonight. We glorify you. In Jesus name. Amen.